Hi everyone. In today's tutorial, I am going to show you how you can install, set up, and use JBrowse. JBrowse is a tool that is used for visualizing genomes. And so you can use it to, for example, visualize genome annotations. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'll show you how to set it up on a Linux system. And let me also say that the ebook as well as the script for this tutorial are all available on my Patreon channel. So check the description box for the link and then you can use that to get the materials. So take note of that. So first of all, you need to visit the homepage, which is here. I will leave the link to this page in the description box. And then you will find this download button. So click it and then you'll be sent to the download page. So here there are different versions. Because we are going to use a Linux system, we will download the Linux version. So you can click to download. So when you click the download button, you'll be asked to save. So you can save it in an appropriate directory. But I will cancel and use another approach. Because I'll be working on the terminal, I'll just download using my terminal. So I'll get a download link. So I'll right click and then I'll copy the link. So I'll move to the terminal and then continue. So on the terminal, what I'll do is to CD to my home directory. So I'll say CD and then I'm going to download the file. Okay, there's a executable file. So I'll say wget and then I'll supply it with the download link, the one I copied. And then I'll execute the command. So this is going to download JBrowse for me. Okay, the file has been downloaded. So let's take a look at it. Let's clear the screen and check. Let's do an LS. We are going to find a file here. So this is the executable file. Now this file here, the name is very long. So I'm going to rename the file. So I'll say MV. Then I'll specify the name and then I'll say JBrowse. I want to use a shorter name. If I do an LS, I'll see that the file has been renamed. What I'm going to do next is to add execution rights. Okay, so that I can always execute it. So I'll say ch mode plus x, and then I'll supply it with the name. Perfect. So if I do an LS, depend on the platform you are using, the color of the file would have changed, the name would have changed. Okay, but it doesn't matter. Once you have executed this command successfully, everything is okay. So let's continue. Perfect. So now we are done. So what we are going to do is to execute JBrowse. Okay, so to execute it, I'll just say dot slash and I'll say JBrowse. So let's execute this command. Okay, so JBrowse has been opened. So you can maximize it. Perfect. So this is how we install and set up JBrowse. Okay. But now let's take a look at something. Here. Let's close JBrowse. We'll come back to this. Let's close it and then uh, do some final setup. And then we can also test with some example data. But now let's close JBrowse. Now with the current setup, we always have to execute using this approach. Or if let's say we have a directory that we have CD into it, then we need to specify the full path to JBrowse. Okay, so this can be problematic. Let's just do an LS again. This can be problematic, okay, because on a Linux system, it's likely you'll be moving from one directory to the other. So we want to set up our system so that when we call JBrowse like this, it will be executed for us like this. Let me just correct it. So we want to set up us so that we can call JBrowse like this. Then JBrowse will be executed. But let's just take a look at something. Let's clear the screen first. But with our current setup, if we call JBrowse like this, we are going to get this coming up. Okay. So we are going to resolve this. So what we are going to do next is to add JBrowse to our path. Okay, so that we can just call it by its name. So using that approach makes it 
convenience so that no matter where you are on the system you can always use just the jbrowse name like this so that's what we are going to do next so let's just do an ls again to look at what we have so we are going to create a directory called apps so i'll say make that apps and then i am going to move jbrowse into that apps i always try to organize my apps my tools okay so i put all of them in a single directory installation directory so i'll say make that apps and i'll say make the apps slash jbrowse okay and then i'm going to move the jbrowse executable there so i'll say mv jbrowse and then i'm going to specify app slash jbrowse it's just a way to organize my files okay so now if i do an ls it's not there but if i do ls into apps i'll see this directory jbrowse ls into app slash jbrowse i'll see my file there okay so now what i'm going to do is to get the path to this file okay so to do that let's just clear the screen first let's do an ls again i'm going to cd into this directory so that i'll be able to get a pass to this file okay there are other ways to do it but because some of my viewers may be beginners i repeat there are a couple of ways to get a path but because some of my viewers may be beginners i'll use a simple approach so i'll cd into it so i'll say cd apps slash jbrowse and then i'll say pwd okay i'm going to get this path so this is what i need so you should also try it and then it's likely what you see will be different or what will be displayed for you will be different so just take note of whatever has been given to you so i'll copy my efforts now i will cd back to the home directory so i'll just say cd and then i'm going to edit my dot bash rc file okay so it's a heading file so to edit i'll say nano dot bash rc you can also use any text editor that is fine but this approach works for me okay so i'll do this and then i'll open it then i will scroll to an open or an empty space okay i have some here so i'll just use this one okay so i'll do this i'm going to say export path equals dollar path and then i'm going to paste that path there this one there okay so this is how it's going to be done okay so just make sure that you have indicated the right path also here so export path equals dollar path and then you bring your colon and then you bring this one here okay so just make sure you do it that way okay so now you can exit and save changes perfect that has been done okay so this is how we do it. so now that we are done with this let's open a new terminal and then test the browse okay so we have opened a new terminal so i'll just type jbrowse jbrowse and once i do that jbrowse is going to be open for me like this okay so this is how we do it okay so now you can use jbrowse okay so with what we've done no matter where you are on the system you can just call jbrowse by its name and then jbrowse will be open for you perfect now we have set it up so we are going to test jbrowse so we are going to use jbrowse to open some files okay a genome annotation data that's what we are going to do next so i already have an example data that we are going to use so let's first download that data so we will go back to the github page that has the data it's on one of my github repos which is 
here this is a pitch let's just check it yeah this is the pitch and i'll leave the link to this page in the description box so here you will see this file here so click it and then after clicking you will get this okay you will see this download button so you can click to download or you can also use the terminal but i'll use the terminal so i'll just right click and get the download link now i'll move back to the terminal now if you move back to the terminal that you used to open jbras you will find this there okay because jbras is still active and so what you want to do is to open a new terminal and then continue from there so that's what i'm going to do so let's open a new terminal okay i have opened a new terminal so i will proceed so i'll first create a directory called annotation And then I will cd into it. And then I will download the example data. I'll say wget. And then I'll supply it with a download link, which is here. So I'll execute this command. Perfect. That has been done. So let's check the file. So let's do an ls and we are going to find the file. So it's a zip file. So we need to unzip it. So I'll say unzip annotation 1. Okay, that's the name. That has been done. So I have them there. So if I do an ls, I'm going to find some files here. The info.txt gives a brief description of the data. So let's say cat info.txt. So it says this data is a SARS-CoV-2 annotated sequence. Okay, so that's what you have. And I've already made a tutorial where I showed how to annotate a SARS-CoV-2 via um, genome so you can watch that tutorial the link to that video is in the description box so we are basically using the output of that tutorial here so we have this and then this okay so in that tutorial you learn how to assemble viral genomes as well as annotate them so make sure you check that video okay so we also have this dot fna which is a fast a file which has a fast a sequence and we also have a gff file here okay so basically what i did in that tutorial was to annotate a sequence so the sequence that was annotated is what is found here and then the features are the ones that are found here so we are going to visualize by loading this and then this into jbrowse and then look at what will be displayed for us so that's what we are going to do next so now that we have our data we can proceed so let's call jbrowse again so we will say jbrowse and then we will execute it perfect so jbrowse has been opened it has been opened so let's enlarge it and then let's open our file so to open a file come to the left side and then click on open sequence files and then you'll be given this information so here you need to indicate the name okay so we have assembly name so i'll just type any name so i'll just say sas cov 2 okay so you can use any name that is appropriate okay so just take note of that assembly display name is optional so i'll leave it as it is now when we come here let's type here we are going to use a fast a file switch is not indexed so we will just select the fast a adapter this one and then when you come to file make sure you click the file and then come to choose file and then click on choose file and then you can locate your files so we will start with the fast a file which is this one so open it and then come to submit after that, you see this window. Make sure this one has been selected. There are other options, but it depends on the data you have. With the data that we have, we have to use linear genome view. You can also experiment with others. That's fine, but let's keep it this way. Now, click on launch view. And then you see this. When you see this, click on open. 
and then this will come up so here it says no tracks active we need to select a track so even though we've loaded the data we need to still select it so that it is displayed here so click on open track selector and then on the right side you'll find the window open so we have our sequence which has been labeled as reference that's the first a file so check it first and after you do that the name will appear here but we still have one more thing to do we need to load the features okay so to load the features just come to the lower bottom here you will see this one here so click the plus button and then select our track so when you click on our track you'll find this here so let's check the main file section so click on file and then click on choose file so click choose file and then you can select your gff file also after that you go to next here we are not going to select anything so go to next and then just scroll down we will leave everything as it is okay and then we will click on add and after that we will have our data or our genome displayed nicely for us so here you can close this one you can close these ones you can always reopen them back again so we have our tracks here and we also have our annotation so when you click on any of the gens you have some details about them some information about the one you click here so you can just read check the lens name and then id etc so this is how we do it so this is how we install setup and then use jbra so this is an intro video by the way so check the jbra's website and then you have some tutorials to help you to visualize your genomes okay so that's what we have so just check the description also so you have some useful tutorials there and then just learn something new so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next session